Hi everyone. Uh, this video is to show you a couple new things uh, I've been playing around with with uh, Desmos. Uh, it's pretty amazing what can be done here, and so um, just want to sort of share what can be done uh, part, with a couple things here. The, we're using the Polygon tool, um, and we got five points listed here. And what it is is if you connect them in a certain order, you can go and get a pentagon. But instead, we connected them in a certain order and got a, a star shape. Uh, that's why these numbers are in, seem to be in a somewhat random order. So a couple things here. Let's back it up a step. Uh, x squared plus y squared equals 1. That's your equation for uh, a circle with a radius of 1. Uh, let's go ahead and turn that off because then it looks a little more interesting without it. But uh, we'll keep it on for now maybe. Where this is, um, the other way you can represent any point on a circle is with cosine and sine. So this is more, you know, the math analysis or trig level. But once you got that, the whole idea is that if you can put one point, you can put as many points as you want. Uh, so we can make a five-pointed star, a ten-pointed star, a seventeen-pointed star, anything you want uh, based on this. So what I did is, is, okay, if the circle is 360 degrees or if it's two pi radians, then we want five points. So two pi divided by five, that's right here. And then another two pi would put us at four pi over five, and then another two over five would give us six over five, and then another two over five gives us eight over five. So again, each one, there's a spacing of two fifths pi, or two pi over five. Uh, and again, they're in different order because Desmos connects them in that order, and we wanted a star. Now, where that gets a little more interesting is, let's turn off the points there. Let's turn on, well, we can keep the circle on. But if you press A, this will now spin. That's sort of the fun with it. Okay, so that's kind of cool. And then you can take the circle out, and now it's just spinning. If you go over here, you can take off the x-axis and y-axis. And now you got an image that no one could tell that was created in a graphing program. So it's kind of cool. Uh, if that's not cool enough for you and you want to move it left or right, check this out. Adding that A slider to the X value forces it to shift left or right with A. So again, the polygon tool t connects all the points we had, and then by giving it commands in here, you can change it. Okay, so that's plus A. Or you could multiply it by A, and it could change in size. So lots of different things you could do. Whoa, A, A, there we go. Okay, so lots of different things you can do, and you play around with it, and sometimes you're surprised by what you find with this thing. It's, it's all about ex exploration, you know, have some fun with it. Um, but the more math you know, it's the easier it is to get what to do what you want. And the fun and the challenge is, how do I make it do what I want? I want it to do this. What command do I need? So let's take that back out. Uh, let me show you one last cool thing before we wrap up this short video. We put A. Now you got it spinning. We can change the speed a little bit and change the direction so it's just going across this one direction. But what really gets fun here is if you copy this, paste it, and add a second one at a different speed. So now the purple one's going at a different speed. Or you say, okay, well, I don't want it at a different speed. I want it at a different height, and that's two above. So you can play with all kinds of things. Um, and you know layer them and stuff like that. So now you can copy that, paste it, and give it two above. And again, yeah, let's let's change the speed and let's add this one to a 1.5 speed. So now it's going a little bit different speed. And you can zoom out. And now you see them going at a different speed. And there's no limit to what you can do with this. You can just keep on pasting and put this one at uh, 2.5 speed. So now we got different ones going at different speeds, and you can layer and layer and layer until Desmos can't handle it anymore. Uh, honestly, I think you can probably get 20 stars flying across the screen, and we, it probably still won't even lag. So lots of cool stuff you can do. Then you can screen capture it, turn it into a GIF, uh, anything you want. Um, there's really no limit. There's just so much fun stuff you could do. Um, so uh, before we sign off, I'll show you a quick preview of where I will go with the next one. Or before we do that, let's save this one last time, just to make sure it's there. This one was kind of fun. So I'll show you how to do this next time. This is just based on doing circles with expanding radiuses and connecting around a circle. So you'll see the outline of the circle I was tracing around here. And it's a geometry project I, I like doing with students to have them work with a compass and uh, protractors and stuff, uh, measurements and um, measure the radius and you know 
uh, find the correct uh, location for the next center of the next circle. And um, the challenge then was, you know, how do you give those instructions to Desmos? And believe it or not, I'll explain it more in the next video about that. It's just one, two. Those three equations are all that was required. So one equation for all the circles, a list to generate multiple circles, and then B to have it play through there. Um, so that's it. Uh, so check out that in the next video. Thanks for watching, guys.